this is a forest. I mean, this was 15 acres of ponderosa pine forest. And uh, that's why we bought the property, because there were so, so many trees. Big, beautiful trees, too. I mean, this is small compared to the trees we had. You can see one there and one there. And, and then the trees started. One year, I remember, we had two or three trees that were that turned brown. They call them faders because they fade from green to brown. And uh, they started to die, so we said, oh my God, our trees have bugs. Next year there were 10 or 15, the next year there were 150, and the next year after that there were hundreds. Virtually our whole forest is dead, except for the few trees that you see around us now. And the reason is, of course, because it's getting warmer. It's getting a lot warmer here. I mean, this year, unheard of in Montana, no below zero weather. And these bugs need, they, they thrive unless it's 30 or 40 degrees below zero for a week or two weeks. And so the bugs aren't dying anymore. And um, they're spreading far and wide. We couldn't see that hill before, we couldn't see that one. And now, with all the trees gone, you can tell that, uh, that you're surrounded by, by mountains. So I guess there's a, an emerging view aspect to this. The beetle is a highly evolved killer of trees. It flies to the tree, it burrows in under the bark and lays its eggs, and when the eggs hatch, the, the uh, larvae eat the, uh, eat the cambium, uh, cambium layer and they circle the tree and cut the tree off from the roots so the tree gets no water and no nutrients. Mm -hmm. And uh, this bug carries under its arms, it carries a fungus and uh, when it goes to a tree and lays its eggs it, it leaves some of this blue fungus behind so that when the, when the larvae hatch they have something to eat, very high nutrient um, mm -hmm. food. And that's why a lot of the timber is blue stained when they cut it down because it has this fungus in it that the bugs brought to, to feed their young. Uh, Dendrochinus is the name of the bug and uh, means tree killer. And it is a very good at what it does. Yeah, they're really little, the size of a pencil eraser, but yeah, you can see them if you're out near a tree that's being attacked. The trees, uh, put out sap. When the bugs drill into the hole, mm -hmm. the trees will put out a sap, try and catch it. And uh, well, some trees are naturally resistant to the bugs. That's why we still have trees. But the ones that are infected will shoot the sap out the hole and then try and entomb the bug in this, in, this, um, in this sap. Yes, the mountain pine beetle is an insect I've worked on for a long time. And it's a native component of the forest. And it's a particularly uh, good biochemist in that it has, it has the ability to take those defensive chemicals I was talking about and oxidize them into a pheromone. And so as long as the tree is fighting back, it's actually bringing in more and more and more beetles. It's kind of an early version of jujitsu if you will, using the adversary strength against it. So they put out this pheromone, which is an odor, a chemical odor, and it alerts the other bugs to this um, assault on a tree. Mm -hmm. and they gang up on the tree, and then they'll emit another pheromone that says, okay, the tree's full, we're done, and then the other bugs will go on to something else, a uh, different tree. And then all of these beetles come in, uh, hundreds and hundreds of them within a period of two, three days and then the defensive capability of the tree is simply overwhelmed. So that's a very sophisticated system these bugs have for overwhelming these trees, and that's why these trees have, have lost the fight. Uh, let's walk down here. I'll kind of show you a bunch of them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> receded all this grass. Hmm. So this used to be completely covered with trees? Yeah. Wow. Well, you can see all the stumps up here. These were all trees at one point. Big trees, too. Some of them were 200 years old. And they just, one after another, kept dying. And, and one after another, we had to cut them down. Oh, it was sickening, really. It was, uh, you can hear the bugs at night. It's quiet. I think it's kind of clicking sound inside the tree. 
and uh, you know, it makes you sick to your stomach to know that your forest is dying all around you, yeah. and and to know it's even bigger than that. I mean, there's one thing to have this personal story of our trees dying on our property, but to know that trees are dying everywhere, it's moving uh, all over the place. I mean, virtually there's been an outbreak from from uh, the mountains to California because they're everywhere. They've spread all over the place. And it's one element of what's happening to the forest in the West. There's other elements, but this is a big one. In fact, it's also spread to Canada, and Canada has had far more die-off of its trees than we have. And this is this is big, but Canada's outbreak is even bigger. And they're worried that this bug will uh, work its way up into the, uh, into the Canadian Shield, which is the forests that go all the way across Canada and uh, kill virtually all the trees up in Canada. And so we're now seeing outbreaks by mountain pine beetle uh, higher latitudes in British Columbia and Alberta in the past than in the past and we're also seeing outbreaks um, to a greater extent at higher elevation pine ecosystems than in the past. The bristlecone pines are dying. There's Hemlocks dying, there's trees dying all over the world, mm -hmm. and it's documented. And to know that that's going on, it gives you this feeling that things are kind of spiraling out of control. Mm -hmm. and it's a kind of a feeling of helplessness, you know. What can you do? Well, you can't do anything, mm -hmm. or not much anyway. If we get 6 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the next 100 years, uh, all bets are off in terms of what will come back. You now, in some places in New Mexico, I just read a study about uh, forests there that have burned, and instead of trees coming back, it's shrubs. And so the trees might not come back in a lot of places if, if the temperature is so changed that they can't make a living anymore. Mm -hmm.